you know, I started out to solve a problem, which was uh, uh, how, how to prototype plastic parts that you were going to injection mold. And you know, back 30 years ago, that was um, uh, a really tedious process. You had to come up with a design, uh, go to a tool maker, get the tool made, either a hard tool or soft tool, get the part molded. Uh, usually wouldn't mold. <laughs> when the molder got it molded, it wasn't right, and you had to recycle this several times. So it could be a couple of months from the time you had the part idea until you had, you had the real part. So I, th I saw that as a big uh, impediment to, to design of plastic parts because, you know, I had to design plastic parts now and then, so I got frustrated. So uh, I worked at, at a company called Ultraviolet Products, and we did all kinds of uh, uh, products in the uh, ultraviolet radiation field. And one of the products was curing uh, UV curable materials. So they're used for coatings, like coatings for furniture and paper and so forth. I kind of put two and two together. If I could print lots of these layers, uh, I could have a real plastic part. So that was, that was just kind of the, the basic aha. And then it was then all the effort to, uh, to make that happen. Well, I had, uh, I had set up a, uh, a small lab where I worked uh, with the idea of printing. And, um, of course, nobody had printed before, so I, um, I made all the, uh, uh, all the mistakes. I had, it had been working and working, it was looking better and better, like I was going to be able to uh, 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 actually print a real part. And so work, working in the lab late at night, and fin finally got that first part printed. So if you, uh, uh, if you know stereolithography, at the, at the end of a print, the part just comes up out of the vat. And so, so that was kind of then the, uh, uh, the, the culmination of the whole thing, print, 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 print. And it was probably, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes of printing and you know, comes the part. So it was, it, was, it was an exciting moment. I was interested in this you know, prototyping plastic parts. And so, you know, I, I said, yeah, we can do that. You, were, you know, I can, you know, having done that, now I can see the path to uh, actually making this available as a product or as a, um, as a technology for design engineers. So in that sense, you know, I said, you know, I've solved the technical problem and now it's, uh, uh, now we now we have to uh, figure out how to how to make this uh, a reality for for engineers. Uh, but as you know, this 3D printing technology is, is these days is used for lots of other things other than than uh, prototyping plastic parts for engineers. So uh, so you know I, I didn't have that <laughs> I didn't go, oh I've you know I've changed the world for you know how how you uh, how you make uh, objects in general. It was a small cup, and so I wanted to program some shape that, that was kind of complex enough that it had some meaning, but you know, simple enough that I could you know, program it in my computer. And uh, uh, so there's, there's, I guess, um, really two symbols. I mean, to me, to me it was my, I called it an eye cup. <laughs> Because it's it's the sort of thing it looked like the thing you might use uh, uh, an eye doctor might use to wash an eye. Uh, uh, my wife, uh, of course, uh, called it a communion cup. <laughs> you know, as uh, you know, as a giving thanks to uh, to all the time and effort and and the, and you know guidance from above, I guess. I certainly was a wannabe uh, entrepreneur, so I had gotten interested in entrepreneurship. Had spent a lot of time uh, at the uh, uh, Caltech Enterprise Forum, which is the same as the uh, MIT Enterprise Forum, which is um, uh, a, a, a learning experience for uh, uh, what does it take to you know 
to start a, start a business and, and run a new business. Uh, and a place to meet a lot of people that are doing it and, uh, and kind of sh get their stories and, and so you get a lot of contacts. Um, the uh, uh, kind of the other thing going on, the, um, the economy, as it's prone to sometimes do, was not in very good shape in, in, uh, in that year. And so the, 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 the company, this ultraviolet products was uh, was, you know, I won't say struggling, but you know their sales were down and they were cutting back and adjusting. So of course I was excited about this technology and and the the potential. So I'm talking to the president, saying, hey, you know we you know we should commercialize this and and uh, 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 you know see if we can uh, figure out how to monetize what what's happened here and uh, his response was yeah it's interesting <laughs> but I don't have any money <laughs> and, and uh, we, we can't really invest in this and uh, in, in fact he says you know I, I'm cutting back engineering and probably gonna gonna cut your job and so I cut a deal with him that said you know uh, why don't I see if I can go spin out a new company to do this technology, and um, and you know we'll we'll license back from you the 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 intellectual property, and so he agreed to do that, and off I went. Yeah. Well, I you know I've I've never been known for not having a lot of confidence, <laughs> and so it was. Uh, uh, it was certainly challenging, and um, uh, and a lot of lots of uncertainty. But I, I, I probably wouldn't call it scary. I, I, I guess uh, another when I say confidence, I've also also had always had lots of confidence that you know the three D printing uh, would uh, is a very um, uh, very useful and good thing to pursue and, and, uh, uh, and that there, sh there, there should be a good future to that. The small company uh, had a, 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 a board of directors and the, uh, so the president of the company says, why don't you take on one of the board members, uh, his name was Ray Freed, as a partner uh, Ray has already started the business. He just sold his business, and he's kind of, a, I think maybe he's looking for something to do. <laughs> and so I talked to Ray. Uh, he uh, instantly agreed to do that. Uh, so I got then the benefit of somebody uh, a little bit older and wiser who had uh, gone through some of the um, how do you start a company and, and, and how do you run a company. So um, uh, then you know, together we sat down, talked through, you know, kind of early financing, uh, early steps in terms of uh, both the technology and, uh, and we started very, on, very early on kind of promoting the technology uh, to gain interest. Uh, and the interest was uh, both so that we would, when we had products, we, would, we, we, we knew we could have some market uh, and, um, and also to get some visibility to the financial community. A lot of that time is is uh, is actually technology development and market development and, and uh, application development. So uh, the uh, uh, it it takes a lot of effort and a lot of work to to go from uh, you know an idea and a vision to uh, to a reality. So uh, and and a lot of work by lots of people, lots of good people. So as you know, there's you know, thousands and thousands of people around the world involved in using and developing and perfecting this, this technology. So uh, it, you know, it's um, you know, a big difference between having a vision and starting a company and where we are today. I don't know that it's in the, the 
the generosity of open sourceness these days, uh, but it was more a practical business thing because um, you, you would talk to CAD companies and, and, and say that you had this, this format and, and yet they knew we had a patent on that. <laughs> And so they were hesitant then to, uh, to, to, to develop something into a proprietary format. How good a business could it be for them if they, if they wrote to this narrow um, uh, format? So we, I just made the decision, you know, let's, you know, let's make that public. And basically we, we declared we would not enforce the patent. And so that basically freed it up so that people would write to it. Well, it was just one of those things sitting around, you know, an afternoon trying to figure out, you know, what, what to name the technology. And um, uh, it, you know, I definitely wanted to tag lithography because that, that, that's you know, kind of synonymous with printing. And, um, uh, and, and then stereo is, is, is kind of a, a, a Greek word that, that means you know, three-dimensional or you know, a, a volume. So I just put those two words together, so a, a volume printing, a three-dimensional printing. I certainly didn't have the, the vision that the President Obama was going to say that. No. <laughs> the, uh, 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 but for lots of years, I, I've, I've been confident that, the, that this technology and this class of technology will, will do you know, what, what it's doing and what it's going to do. The, the customers have been either you know, fairly large corporations with their in, internal capabilities or the, uh, uh, service bureaus, company that, job shops that are formed to serve lots of customers. Uh, and so the, the question has always been, how can we get it beyond that? How can we get it so that, you know, certainly first individual engineers and then individuals can, uh, can do this, can afford to do it, and it's, it's, uh, it's not uh, as complex, I guess, as, <laughs> as the initial, you know, something that's uh, intuitive and straightforward to run. A lot of us, most of us, are, are makers, or, or let's say we have some, some, something that we pursue other than our profession, uh, or close to our profession. You know, we work all day and we go home and we make videos or we take pictures or we build things, and uh, uh, so that you know to to be able to uh, to help enable and uh, give satisfaction to people. It's, 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 I really like that. A few ways, but probably the main way is that, that, that I'm a technologist, so uh, that means that I understand um, sort of what, what can and can't be done with, with, with current knowledge. And so, you know, I, I look at some of the application printing stakes, for example. Uh, you know, I, I understand uh, you know what what can't be done and what inventions need to be done uh, to do that. And um, and in that sense, then there's a lot of you know, mo let's put it this way: most most of the technology that we need hasn't been invented yet. You know, there's just a tremendous. Uh, green field of things uh, for uh, innovators to do, which which uh, you know sort of makes me wish I was uh, you know back in 1986 and could start uh, start inventing this stuff again. It's, you know, it's there's a there's a you know, if if you're innovative and creative, there's there's just a, a tremendous opportunity. None of this is easy. You know, it, it, it's not like, you know, there was an invention and, uh, you know, the, the Red Sea parted and things happened automatically. It takes lots of work, uh, lots of failures. Uh, and, 
uh, lots of successes and uh, just you know, carry on and do it.